She's best known as the first Muslim to be appointed to the British cabinet, but Baroness Vasi has more than one notch to her belt. She was born to Pakistani immigrant parents in a working class part of the UK and went on to become a successful lawyer, MP and was elevated to the House of Lords at the age of just 36, making her the youngest peer in the parliament. She iconically dressed in a pink shower kameez when she was appointed in 2010 by then Prime Minister David Cameron. And she has since then taken a very prominent role in British public life, speaking out on issues of Islamophobia. Of all the books you could have written about your political career, you opted to write a book about Muslims in Britain. Why? The enemy within is something that I was called when I was a minister at the cabinet table. I was called the enemy at the table. It was probably one of the worst insults that could have been directed at me because what it said to me, as the granddaughter of two men who had served in the British Indian Army, as the daughter of parents who had broken their back, creating a future for themselves but jobs for other people in the mills of England, um, as somebody who herself had served her country at the highest table, that insult still said to me, you don't belong. And so this is my book to say, I do. I asked Baroness Varsi whether she felt Muslims are still regarded as the enemy within. That battle is still ongoing, but it's not a new battle. It may be new for British Muslims, but it's a battle that communities in this country have had over hundreds of years. There was a time when in Britain we thought the Catholics were the enemy within. We then thought the Jews were the enemy within. We thought the black community were the enemy within. So this is a term that has been used to other communities uh, throughout our history, Muslims are simply the latest who we consider to be the enemy within. A week before our interview, a British Muslim attacked Westminster, killing four people. Would many people now believe that Muslims are the enemy within? I call terrorists the enemy within my faith. Any individual who uses Islam as a way of justifying violent acts, violent men who use the cloak of Islam as a way of respectability to justify their violence, are the enemy within my faith. You're quite critical of the government's counter-terrorism policy. Where exactly do you think that's going wrong and, and why has it gone so wrong? It's not rooted in evidence and it's not based upon the advice of experts. It's based upon ideological, political positioning. The um, argument that this is somehow, there is a linear journey from having conservative or non-violent extremist views to them becoming a terrorist, uh, the fact that ideology is the kind of catch-all reason for radicalisation. You can prevent people from becoming terrorists by imposing a policy which is neither trusted nor supported um, by the very communities in which you're trying to operate. Statistics point to a rise in anti-Muslim sentiment in the UK. Is the British government doing enough, I ask her, to address this? What I want to see is a mainstream politician preferably the Prime Minister, come out and do a speech on Islamophobia and anti-Muslim hatred. It's not been done. And it's sad that the only speech that about Islamophobia that has been done by a mainstream politician was by a Muslim, by myself, in 2011. It's now 2017. It's That speech is long overdue. We've made progress. We set up the Cross-Government Working Group on anti-Muslim hatred. We started to fund groups who actually monitor anti-Muslim hatred. We started, we asked police forces to start to disaggregate hate crime. All of these are great progress, but I think we need to, we need to set out a vision as well as these very practical measures, the message needs to go out strongly from central government that Muslims are an integral part of the United Kingdom. Varsi has made no secret of her faith, and I asked her what part her religious identity has played in her political career. My faith is a rule book for me. It's not a lecture series for you. It's a ruler against which I measure myself, not a stick with which I beat you. It's a source of great strength uh, during difficult times and it's a great leveller and, uh, and a check and balance for me at moments of great success. It grounds me. And I think politics is one of those crazy worlds where if politicians have a mechanism which helps them assess their behaviour and conduct, that's got to be a positive sign. In the last few years, state multiculturalism, which long defined the British model of integration, has come under attack. I asked Varsi whether it has indeed failed. You know, multiculturalism for me is the 
you know, British-born, Pakistani, working-class girl who turns up at the first cabinet meeting in a pink shawar kameez. That's multicultural Britain. It's a moment we can all celebrate. I think what I think has failed is where successive governments or indeed local governments felt that the way in which you deal with um, uh, issues around uh, deprivation and lack of opportunity in minority communities is to silo them off. State multiculturalism became the crumbs off the table. What should have been happening was creating policies which gave minority communities a stake in the cake. Although she initially backed Brexit, Varsi subsequently changed her mind. What was it that led to that switch? I referred to people like me and others like me as hello world Brexiteers. We, we, it was a, a moment to open up our borders and look further afield than Europe rather than uh, the message that won the Brexit vote, which was shut down the borders, put up the barriers uh, and we're little islanders again. And when I realised that actually what Britain thought it was voting for was Little Island Brexit, and that Little Island Brexit was never going to be delivered, and we were using the most toxic and divisive language and imagery to try and get people to vote for Brexit, I looked at the people who were on that campaign, and like I said at the time, they're not the kind of people I would have got on a night bus with, so why was I campaigning alongside such people on such a toxic, divisive message? Thank you so much for talking to us today.